So now that we've talked about these double integrals over rectangles, let's talk about how to actually evaluate them. We can actually evaluate them by performing what's known as an iterated integral. An iterated integral is used for a function of multiple variables. Additionally, this is the inverse operation to a partial derivative. <clears throat> when taking a partial derivative, we're treating one variable as though it's an actual variable and treating any other variable as though it's a constant. So suppose that we have a function of two variables. We'll say that z is a function of both x and y. Then there are two possible iterated integrals that we could do for this. One of them would be to integrate this thing with respect to x, or we could also integrate this thing with respect to y. Now, because we need it on here, iterated integrals for the time being will be a form of a definite integral. So in this situation, we are going to treat y like a constant. We've already designated x as our variable, so we're going to be treating y as though it's a constant as we integrate. Whereas over here, we're treating y as though it's a constant, so we're going to treat x like a constant. Now, with this in mind, it becomes incredibly, incredibly important that you make sure that you have an actual differential at the end of your integral. Otherwise, we're not going to know what's a variable and what's a constant. For example, I'm going to bring in the iterated integral of 4x cubed y plus 3y squared. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And if I don't specify a differential, then I have no idea what's going on. So tell you what, we'll actually do this one twice. We'll do it once dx, and then we'll do it once dy. So with x being our variable, we're treating anything up here that is a y as though it is simply a constant. So when I say 4x squared y, the 4 and the y are both being treated as constant multiples. So we could do 4y as a constant multiple and then integrate the x cubed which of course would be x to the fourth divided by four. Plus, three y squared is now a constant term. The integral of a constant with respect to a variable is that constant times whatever the variable was. Then of course, we will be evaluating that from zero to one in terms of x. So for the first term over here, the fours will cancel each other out. We'll be left with y times one to the fourth minus 0 to the fourth, upper bound minus lower bound, plus 3y squared times 1 minus 0. Once again, upper bound minus lower bound. What results is a function in terms of only y. y is the only variable left because we have integrated with respect to x. Now I could also consider this exact same situation and change only one thing and the end result changes pretty dramatically. I'm going to change the differential from dx to dy. Now we'll be treating y as though it's our variable, and we'll be treating x as though it's a constant. So for the first term, 4 is a constant multiple, x cubed is a constant multiple, 4x cubed is a constant multiple, and we integrate y with respect to y. That'll be y squared over 2. 3y squared, treating y as your variable, is going to look more like an ordinary integral. Now again, we're going from bounds of 0 to 1, but this time y is going from 0 to 1. Now if we were to simplify this a bit over here, 4 over 2 is 2, x cubed is still a constant, and then y squared would become 1 squared minus 0 squared, plugging in those bounds. We can cancel the 3 with the 3 and be left with simply 1 cubed minus 0 cubed. Some quick calculations let me know that this is going to be 2x cubed plus 1. 
you'll notice that after we've integrated with respect to y, the only variable that we have left is x. Now the idea behind a double integral is we are essentially going to treat it as though it is two iterated integrals, as I will demonstrate in the next video.